Kelly Walquist, and I'm the founder of Wine Women in the New Evangelization. One of the greatest things about being a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ and falling in love with him is that naturally we want to share that with other people. We want to share that joy and that happiness we find in our relationship with him. And Jesus gives us that opportunity to do that. He called us to make disciples of all nations. And he gave us the Holy Spirit to help us do this so we're not on our own. And when you naturally, naturally love someone, you want to tell the world about them. Think about when you're dating, when you, when you meet someone. You want to spend all the time you can with them. You want to talk to them. And after you say goodbye, you can't wait to be back and talking to them again. It's like when you first fall in love with the scriptures. You want to just keep reading. And I remember when I first got into sacred scripture, I couldn't get enough. I couldn't, I couldn't get enough. I looked forward to coming home and closing my door and going in and reading more about his word and hearing what he had to say to me. Then, after I was absorbing all this, I was on fire to share it, to share it with anyone. First, you get a little zealous because you're so excited, but there's a beauty. There's a beauty of the Holy Spirit, and he, he helps you. And if you call on him and just say, come Holy Spirit, help me. Give me the words. Give me the wisdom. Give me the courage. Tell me what this person next to me needs to hear. And let me say it in such a way that I, I touch their heart. And I, I travel a lot. I travel a lot for the work I do, spreading women in the new evangelization. And as such, I'm on a lot of planes. So I always pray for the person I'm going to sit next to for many, many reasons, for many reasons. But I always pray for them. And I've had some of the greatest encounters and opportunities to evangelize right there on a plane. Maybe it's because we're strapped in at 33,000 feet, but they're right there. And it's so interesting to know that most people, when I say to them, I'm Catholic, 99% of the time I hear, oh, I used to be Catholic. And it opens up this beautiful dialogue. And I remember one time I was speaking to a, a young woman, maybe she's in her 30s, and she was so excited, so excited. She, she was going to this wonderful evangelical church and loved it, loved everything about it. And I was caught up in her passion. I was excited for her. And then she said to me, eh, what do you do? And I told her and she said, so you're Catholic? And I said, I am. And she said, wow, you, then you should come to my church because we've got, we've got the best music. She said, I used to be Catholic, but I, I got to tell you, this music is so good. And these, the preaching is so good. You should come to my church. And I think something overtook me. And I, we had this you know, great interaction going on. And all of a sudden, I became very serious. And I just looked at her. And in my eyes, she probably saw it. And I just said, I wouldn't leave the Eucharist for anything. And her whole demeanor changed, and she looked at me and she said, I wish I was that convicted about something. And I said, you can be. Come home. And we opened up a conversation. She's my Facebook friend. <laughs> Who knows what the Lord has in store. So that one of the beauties of being a disciple of Christ and following him and taking upon his yoke is that we get to do his work, too. And he does it with us. So I encourage you, pray to the Holy Spirit. Next time you're in an airplane, say, come Holy Spirit. Give me the words, give me, give me the wisdom, give me the courage. Let me be that instrument of your peace.